Praise the Lord and good evening to everyone. We welcome you to the prayer and Bible study here at the Greater Refuge Temple of Christ in the city of Buffalo, New York. I thank God for all of you logging in. I thank God for his blessings being bestowed upon us. I'm Bishop Robert L. Sanders, Jr., the senior pastor of the Greater Refuge Temple of Christ, and we are looking forward to praying together tonight. We're looking forward to studying the word of God together, and I trust that you will be incredibly blessed on tonight. I trust that you've had a blessed day. I trust that you've had a productive day, and I'm encouraging you to um, invite your family, your loved ones, your friends to uh, to join us in this uh, prayer and Bible study on tonight. So if you would send someone a text, if you would give someone a phone call and let them know that the Greater Refuge Temple of Christ is in prayer and Bible study, we want to make the attempt to reach as many people as possible. So I'm encouraging you to be a virtual evangelist and uh, share this link with someone. We want you to hit that share button if you're uh, watching via Facebook Live in the bottom left corner. Uh, hand corner of your screen. And if you're listening on YouTube, we want you to uh, subscribe to our page so that you'll receive all of the notifications by hitting that uh, notification bell. And once again, we want to do due diligence in reaching as many people as possible. So we're looking forward to prayer. We're looking forward to the study of God's word on tonight. If you desire to uh, sow a seed, if this uh, uh, prayer and Bible study is blessing you, you can click on that uh, that paypal link that you see um in the chat if you have to log off um, um early on tonight so we thank god for you we thank god for his grace his blessings his his peace that passes all understanding his love that continues to be unconditional uh his grace that is sufficient so we are preparing ourselves spirit soul and body to go before the lord in prayer we'll continue our study tonight on uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ. We're going to focus on some of the, uh, the signs of the times and the last things that are to take place before the Lord, Lord comes. And we have to be mindful that there's nothing that really has to take place that would stop the Lord from opening the sky and calling the church home. But we want to be uh, rapture ready. So tonight, before we go into prayer, I want to greet a few of you that have logged on. I thank God for Sister Tanya Carr being on tonight. We welcome uh, Clarice Adams. Good evening to you, Missionary Denise Cobbs. Thank God for you tonight. We say praise the Lord to Mother Schultz tonight. We thank God for Mother Shirley Arnett being on. Hilda Coney, God bless you. We thank God for Minister Eric Simmons. We thank God for Deborah Garrison being on uh, tonight. So we are looking forward to, to what God uh, has to say to us through his word. It's important for you to, to grab your Bible. I will be um, giving you quite a few scriptures that will uh, support our subject on tonight. So have your Bible ready. Once again, invite someone to listen and to watch with you tonight. I believe that this uh, content that we are sharing is very important. And I believe that it's important in the life of the believer. It's important for us to have a zeal and a desire to see uh, the Lord come back uh, very soon. Uh, we want to also take the time tonight to welcome Mother Annie Allen. So glad to see uh, so many of our church mothers logging in. Thank God for Terry Thomas. We say good evening to you. We thank God for Queen Janice Sanders being on uh, with us tonight. Thank God for Sister Mary Poole. I want you to know, Sister Poole, that we miss you here in the city of Buffalo. I hope that all is well with you. I know that the Lord is is blessing uh, you in Jesus' name. So at this time, we're going to uh, prepare ourselves to approach the throne of grace. And I know that we're on a virtual platform, but we can pray together. We can get a prayer through. I know that God can answer prayer uh, spiritually uh in our in our emotions in our body and our soul we know that he'll he'll bless us individually and collectively as we approach uh the throne of grace with great zeal anticipation and expectation we know that god will hear we know he is hearing and he will answer our every prayer on on tonight we believe that prayer changes things we believe that even on this virtual platform that god can make a way out of no way so be encouraged the bible says that the effectual and fervent prayer as written by james uh availeth much and we also know that uh, the book of matthew tells us to ask and it shall be given seek and we shall find knock and the door shall be open unto 
us in Jesus' name. So let's not fail to be specific with what we want God to do. We have we know that we can tell him how high, how low, what color, where, who, when, where, and why. But we know that when we ask, we have to ask. We have to knock on God's door with faith and with something in mind that we want uh, the Lord uh, to do. So before we go into our prayer on tonight, I want you to remember our, those that are on our prayer list, Mother Eunice Gardner, Mother Daisy Johnson, Mother Mildred Neely, uh, Dolores Harden, John Sanders, Katie West, Carlos Clemens, Ronnie Hale, Mother Ruby Tan, Mother Ruby Moore, Renee Neely, uh, Brother Willie Harden, Antonio Thompson, Ezra West, Eva Sheck, Christopher Simmons, uh, Mother Eunice King, Mother Shirley Lorraine Clark, Tamari Thompson, Christine Wims, Catherine Roberts, Zion West. And uh, we also want you to remember the churches of the Western New York Diocese, Refuge Temple Lockport, District Elder Mark Sanders, Amazing Grace Church in Rochester, New York, District Elder Terry Walker, Christ Temple Assembly, Bishop George A. Smith, Temple of Christ Church, District Elder Reggie Kerr, and Cross Stations Church Elder Timothy Sanders. Let's keep these pastors and their congregations in prayer that God's will will continue to be done in their area of, of the vineyard. Let's pray for one another. Let's stand on the promises of God as we pray tonight. Let's continue to pray for the unsaved. We believe that even in these trying times in which we live, we have witnessed even in our church souls being saved, souls being buried in the waters of baptism in Jesus' name and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. We are approaching uh, you know, the throne of grace with great anticipation and expectation. We know much things are taking place in our world. We see things happening in our economy. We see things taking place in politics and in government. And we see the struggle um, and the pursuit of power. But we have to know that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is sovereign. And we have to believe, yes, he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the one that is and the one that was and the one that is to come. And I said all that to say that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he is the one that is absolutely positively in control and nothing that we face, nothing that opposes us or goes against us is going to prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. I'm still I still have the message that we shared on this past Sunday in my spirit that, you know, this strength only comes through Christ. As Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, Philippians 4, 13. We have to put that scripture in our spirit that no matter what we face, we can do all things through Christ. It must be in the will of Christ and we can do uh, all things. So let us approach the throne of grace, standing on the promises of God. I also want you to remember the bereaved tonight, people that have gone through a uh, great loss. I uh, want you to remember Sister Ju Judy Groover and the Groover family and the fishermen of men's church in Washington, D.C. in the passing of Mother Nettie Groover, the wife of the late honorary apostle uh, Clarence Groover. Yes, we want to continue to pray uh, for the families that that experienced great loss at the corner of Jefferson and um, um Riley Street, you know, uh, you know, just back a few months ago, we want to continue to intercede for those families that went through that loss that God will continue to bring his perpetual healing and comfort to their lives. And of course, all those families that were that, that experienced loss throughout the country in these um, these mass shootings. And we want to continue. We don't want to forget them, but we want to continue uh, uh, to pray for them. That tops market here in the city of Buffalo is um, is open now and we want to continue to pray a hedge of protection around that area but not only you know just one area of the city but wherever you are north south east and west we want to intercede for our communities that god's uh god's angels will be encamped around about them and that we will bind the spirit of violence the spirit that would cause one to take another life for for uh for 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 no reason whatsoever and we believe in the power of prayer and we're going to stand on the promises of god tonight so let us pray in jesus 
name. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We're thankful for your unconditional love. We thank you for the peace that you provide for us. We thank you for allowing us to see a brand new day, a day that we have never laid eyes on before. You have shown us time and time again, God, that you are faithful, and we want to return the faithfulness to you by serving you, giving you our very best as we intercede tonight to intercede accept any plan of the enemy, any obstacle that may come, any obstruction that may come to a person's life that would prevent them from moving forward in you. Lord, we're praying for them, Lord God, that you will intercept the plan of the enemy and replace it with your plan. Lord, we know, Lord God, that you have our very best in mind. You are a God that continues to give us your favor, Lord, and we're thankful for every family that is logged in, every family that is represented tonight. We come before you as humble as we know how how to give you honor, to give you praise, to thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done and all that you're going on to do in our lives. We may be on a virtual platform, but we're going to pray. We're not going to faint, Lord God. We're not going to rush through this, but we're going to call on your name, declaring that you are good, declaring that we are blessed in our spirit, soul, and body, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and declare that we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but God, when you shall appear, we shall be like you, and we shall see you just as you are. We are thankful, Lord, for your word that is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our pathway, your word that prepares us, Lord God, for the things that we face in this life, Lord God, to combat the wiles of the enemy, Lord God, that we can prosper during this time, either these challenging times, according to your word, Lord, we have the victory. And at the end of the story, we win. Lord, we want to be rapture ready. We want to be prepared to meet you when you come. And Lord, we know that you're coming soon. It may be morning. It may be night. It may be noon, but Lord, we, your people, want to be ready. We are thankful for the church that you allowed us to be born into. And Lord, for you said upon this rock, you would build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Not the building, Lord God, not the pews that we sit in, but the people that go in, out, in and out of the building. And Lord, we pray for those that may be discouraged, those, Lord God, that uh, are refraining from coming back to the house of worship. Lord, I'm asking you to touch their hearts and let them come together and let us fellowship, Lord God with one another, that your glory will be revealed and that you will bestow upon us a collected blessing. Lord, we come before you tonight knowing that there's nothing too hard for you to do. Lord, we know that discouragement may come. Lord God, we may face failure. We may face periods of doubt, but Lord, we know that you are Jehovah Shammah, the God that is there to comfort us, to, to minister to us, to put us back together again, Lord, when it appears like things are not going our way. We know that you're on our side. As you said, Lord God, through this psalmist, we will not fear what can man do unto us. We know that we are living in trying times, dangerous times, perilous times, but Lord, you are with us and you, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Bless us to be a vehicle, a witness, Lord God, to reach out to the lost. We thank you for those that you have recently saved, those that you have added to the body of Christ. Yes, in the time of pandemic, in the time of disease, in the time of political and governmental unrest, Lord God, Lord, diseases, Lord God, earthquakes and diverse places, for these are the signs of the time. And we, your people, are aware, and we're so glad that our spiritual eyes are open. We are so grateful for the plan of salvation. For Lord, you, Lord God, revealed to us that you lived, you suffered, you bled, you died, you rose on the third day and we give you all the glory tonight. We are thankful, Lord, for we are blessed, not being blessed, but we are blessed. And we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen and amen. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing, but I thank God for this opportunity. I trust that what we pray tonight, no matter how complex it is, no matter how difficult it may appear, there is nothing too hard for God in the name of the Lord. Can you just say that with me? There's nothing too hard for God. God bless you, Sister Osborne, Sister Wanda Osborne. So glad to have you on tonight. We thank God for Denise Foreman being with us tonight. We thank God for Minister Eric Johnson being on. God bless you, sir. We thank God for Mother Vicki Ronan. 
Say, God bless you, Brother Mario Hubbard. So glad to have you on, Deacon Foster. God bless you, Sister Clarissa Alston. God bless you. We're praying for you for your complete and total healing in Jesus' name. We trust God, and we know that he is absolutely able. We thank God for Elder Archie being on uh, tonight, trying to catch up with those that just logged on. Thank God uh, for our Minister Troy Crawford being on in the name of the Lord. Got a testimony already. A car almost hit him today, but thank God for always protecting me from danger. Many people are dealing with road rage and other things, but God is my refuge. God bless you, Minister Crawford. So glad that the Lord brought you through. In the name of the Lord, we thank God for uh, Sister Arlene being on tonight. Sister Arlene McCune, God, God bless you. We thank God for uh, Sister Nicole Simmons. We say praise the Lord to you and all the people of God uh, that are logged in on tonight. So continue to be encouraged. Know that God is able and God has already heard. God has already answered your prayers. And I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's working it out even now. So be encouraged. So we want to take the time to just inform you that we're going to continue to uh, share the word of God right here every Wednesday from six to seven o'clock virtually here via Facebook Live as well as on uh, YouTube. Um, it goes without saying, and those of you that are in the Buffalo area, we would love to see you in the house of the Lord on Sunday at 9 a.m. in the morning. Every Sunday, we are we assemble in person. We also provide the, uh, the virtual opportunity for you uh, to join us, but I would love to see you in the house of God. So we, we invite you with open arms here at the Greater Refuge Temple of Christ, where we are building people for greater works in the name of the Lord, because God didn't just give us one thing to do. He gave us works and we give him the glory that he included us and that I believe that God will use our hands, use our feet, use our eyes, use our ears, use our voices for his glory, for his honor and for his praise. So this coming Sunday is a is a special Sunday. Uh, this uh, coming Sunday is a t-shirt faith expression Sunday. So I want you to be a part of this service. We want you to wear that shirt, that t-shirt that expresses your faith. We want you to wear it. We want you to wear it proudly. Um, if you don't have a t-shirt, that doesn't mean stay home. Just come anyhow. But if you have a t-shirt that expresses your faith, your walk with God, we want you to wear um that shirt and we're going to do something interesting at the end of end of service so we want you to be a part of the service i'll be preaching the word of god to you and god has given me a special message uh to share uh with you on this coming sunday so i want you uh to be uh present and i believe that god is going to bless us in a special way uh this coming sunday so it, will, it wouldn't be the same if you were not there so we want you uh, to be present. So tonight, as we prepare to go to the word of God, uh, feel free uh, to make comments. Feel free to make an observation that uh, may pertain to uh, what we are talking about tonight. And we are still talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we've covered the rapture. We've, uh, we've um, spent some time with the you know, the tribulation and uh, the millennial reign. And we're going to give some of that a little bit more scripture on these particular areas. We know that the Lord is coming soon. We know that the Lord is drawing nigh. He's going to call the church home. And we have to uh, be mindful that we have to pay attention to what is taking place. I gave you an assignment a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, it's kind of a consistent assignment and as you're watching the news, you know, you're watching the news as you're, you're reading the paper, maybe listening uh, to the radio, even surfing the internet on social media. You're going to see something that is a, a reflection of the sign of the times where we are um, in time, what the Lord is revealing, you know, when we turn on the television, we see, we hear what's going on in politics and in, in government and infighting and so forth. We hear about wars and rumors of wars. We hear, you know, uh, about these mass shootings that have taken place in our um, in our country. We see the, uh, the the weather, how weather is changing, earthquakes and people dying in floods and in fire and global warming and so forth. And we have to realize that these are uh, signs that the, that the Lord is is coming uh, soon. 
And we have to pay attention to that. God has given us his word for us to uh, get prepared, be prepared, and stay prepared. And the question we have to ask ourselves, are we prepared to, to, to meet Jesus Christ uh, face to face? So I want you to be encouraged as we study the word of God together. I'm going to uh, be asking you to turn to um, to the scriptures, and I want you to write them down. And um, I'm going to ask Sister Ellis if she would just you know, put those scriptures that um, that I cite um, in the um, in the chat, so that so once again, so that you can um, refer to them, um, you know, when when uh, necessary, so that you'll have a body of information uh, that you can study, that you can review, um, that you can ponder, and that you can apply, if you will, to to your life. So we know that the Lord is uh, is, is coming. You know, and we know that there is going to be a tribulation period after he has removed the church from the earth. And we for a further review, you know, you can read first Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, uh, first Corinthians 15, uh, 50 through uh, 58, uh, the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. And there are other areas of scripture, even in uh, the book of Daniel, which is the um, is the. Uh, the Old Testament um, book that uh, correlates or agrees with Revelation in the New Testament. Uh, so we want to go back to Scripture, if you don't mind, and we want to uh, support some of the things that we would say about the uh, tribulation, as well as uh, uh, something that will occur called the Battle of Armageddon. These are things that are happening in uh, that it will happen in the last days. And uh, Matthew 24 is a scripture that we have reviewed before, but for some review sake, we'll, we'll go back there. Matthew, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. That's Matthew 24 and uh, 21. And we find that uh, we find the words of Jesus. You know, it's beautiful when we can read from the scriptures what Jesus said. If Jesus said it, we have to believe it. If we, Jesus said it, we have to take him at his word. And the word says, for then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. In other words, this tribulation will be worse than when the Lord destroyed the, uh, the earth in a, in a flood. And we know that, you know, um, Noah and his family, you know, had to endure the, uh, the rain had to endure the flood for 40 days and and for, for 40 nights. And Jesus is saying that the times, you know, that we are in right now will be worse than in the beginning uh, of the world. So we have to uh, pay uh, very close attention uh, to that. So that's a New Testament scripture. If you go to the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter and the first verse, you'll find these words. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never since, which as never was since there was a nation. And even to that same time, and at the time thy people shall be delivered, and every one that shall be found written in the book. So we have to make sure that we are, you know, just let me pause here. We need to make sure that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, whose name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We have to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We have to accept what the gospel says to us about the life, death, the burial, and the rising of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, from the dead on the third day. We have to believe in the power and the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We have to believe once again that there is a heaven and there is a hell, but Jesus is the escape of hell and Jesus is the way. He is the only way. He is the truth and the life that would allow us to experience heaven. So we have to be mindful that these scriptures are talking about the tribulation. This next scripture is going to talk about uh, the battle of Armageddon. And we're going to go there in Revelations, the 16th chapter. The battle of Armageddon is very important. The 
Bible describes uh, this battle to be a battle that would cause bloodshed, that would um, that would rise to the horse's uh, bridle. And um, when I think about the uh, Battle of Armageddon now, I think about where it's going to take place in the Valley of Megiddo uh, in Israel. And uh, I remember there was a, you know, there was a time in my life when I'm studying scripture and I'm saying, well, Lord, how could this battle, this battle take place in the in a, in a valley? Because many times we think of a valley, we don't think of, a, you know, a huge place, you know, but uh, when I went to Israel, um, been to uh, the Israel, I believe, you know, four times, and um, every time I went to Israel, we went to the 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 Valley of Megiddo, and when I looked over into that valley, it, the only thing that I, because it was so much green grass, it made me think of just tens of thousands of uh, football fields. You know, that's how large um, it is, and this is where you know, in the final analysis, where the Battle of Armageddon uh, will 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 take place and we find that in the book of revelations the 16th chapter in the 14th verse we find these words revelations 16 14 through 16 we find these words for they are the spirits of devils working of miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle that great day of god almighty that great day of God uh, Almighty, and um, uh, as we as we go forward, it says, "Behold, I come as a thief." Remember, we've heard that um, that phrase before. That the Lord comes as a thief. He is not a thief, but he comes as a thief because he knows exactly who he's coming for. He says, "Go by, come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest they walk." naked and they see his shame and he gathered them together into a place called in the hebrew tongue armageddon the place in the hebrew tongue called armageddon which is a hill or a city also called megiddo so we have to know that this battle uh, is uh, going to take place according uh, to uh, the scriptures so we have to know that there is um that jesus christ our lord and savior is going to set up his millennial kingdom if you will after the um after the tribulations if we uh take if we backpedal just one more time and go into matthew 24 and 40 and 29 uh matthew 24 and 29 we find these words once again it says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Sounds like a relatively frightening time. Stars falling, the sun that lights, that gives us light during the day, darkened, moon that gives us light during the nighttime will be darkened, won't give off their light. And the Bible says that the heavens shall be shaken and we have to know that that this is the, the conclusion of, of 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 the tribulation so once again we must note uh these things we must note uh these prophecies and that we'll know that you know the tribulation is a period of time where the world is plunged into not only physical darkness but spiritual um spiritual uh darkness uh, as well and we have to know that, you know, that there'll be, you know, great judgment, terrible judgment and, and chastisement. So let me pause. This is why we don't want to be here. This is why we don't want to go through the tribulation and because of the time of, of, uh, of judgment. So we have to know that in the first three and a half years, you know, the, 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 the Antichrist will um, be an answer, you know, you know, to, to many people's problems, a world leader, a political leader that the world accepts. You know, it's interesting where we're living right now and the times in which we're living right now, we just have to be honest. It's all types of disagreement in government. You know, just be just be honest. When we watch it on the news, there is, uh, there is uh, so much disagreement in government. It's so much battle for, for, um, 
for position and power. And we have to know that it, 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 you know it's it's Democrats, it's Republicans, conservatives, liberals, moderates, you know, independents, you know, um, you know, trying to to find the answer for people. And in this time, the Antichrist will be that answer. Now, just look at the name Antichrist, Antichrist. The Antichrist stands for everything that is unlike or that is polar opposite, if I could put it this way, to Christ. But he's going to be uh, accepted, you know, in the last, you know, three and a half years, you know, his of the tribulation, which is a seven year period. But in the last three and a half years, his rule, you know, uh, culminates. And we have to know that this, you know, once again, a time of, of, of trouble, you know, um, a time of, of of judgment and we know that you know jesus christ is going to come back in judgment to set up his kingdom upon the earth this earth has to be reconstructed this earth has to be remade because sin is in this earth the people in this earth are corrupt the earth that we walk on is corrupt it's been corrupt because of sin the lord has to make it all over, make it all over again we want to spend some time in the conclusion of revelation because in the book of revelation we know that at the conclusion the lord begins to describe what the holy city looks like it begins to describe uh it's, you know uh what it's made out of what the environment of the holy holy city is like and the bible says it shall descend come down out of heaven you know so we 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 have to be uh we have to be mindful um of that so let's take a look at a few scriptures that deal with that last uh three um and a half years of the tribulation so let's take a you know take a look at scripture because we want to support what we say with scripture um so revelations 11 2 through 3. revelations the 11th chapter and then we are going to go to the second and third verse. It says, but the court which is without the temple leave out the measure of it, not for it's given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months, 40 and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand 203 score days clothed in sackcloth. So we see, you know, uh, once again, that there will be two witnesses, you know, during the tribulation. The scripture says that they will prophesy. They will prophesy during that time. And you might say, well, I'm going to wait till that, till that. No, you don't want to wait. You don't want to try to make it through the tribulation. We know that some of the elements of the tribulation, you know, you're going to be, the person would be approached whether they wanted to make um, an allegiance to the mark, I mean, to the uh, Antichrist by taking the mark of the beast because he's the beast. And the Bible lets us know without that mark, you cannot buy um, or sell. And the reason for these witnesses, you know, would be those that will be you know, saved during the tribulation. And we have to be mindful that there are our tribulation saints, but they will have to die um, as martyrs in order to, in order to be saved. And we don't have to do that because we have the word of God. And we have to also be mindful that during the tribulation, during the millennial reign of Christ, it's not going to be this all of a sudden, everybody wants to repent and everybody wants to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And everybody wants to come to God. It's going to be rejection of God. It's going to be a cursing of God, you know, because of of, of, of the judgment that's going to uh, that's going to be taken, taking place uh, during that time. So if we go to the 12th chapter of of Revelation. And I know that I'm skipping around here. You know, I can't teach the whole book of Revelation, but but we want to point out some highlights. The 12th chapter, uh, let's see, the 14th verse. Um, we find, you know, some some more elements of what's taking place in these last three and a half years. It says, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and time and, and half a time. And from the face 
of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away uh, of the flood. So we see consistent uh, judgment um, taking place. We have to know that, you know, we you know of this or this, the flood that we're talking about will be different than the flood in the book of Genesis when we dealt with Noah and his family. The floods that we see now, we see what water can do when water is out of control. We see what has taken place throughout, uh, you know, the country, specifically in the, the southern regions of our country. You know, floods are taking place, and during this hot weather, and people losing homes, and so forth and so on. And we have to realize that this is just a drop in the bucket, if you will, that what's um, going to play take place at the, you know, at the at the conclusion of of of, of the tribulation period. So uh, we have to know that once again, we have to be aware of these great times, the season of trouble. But there is also something that we know. We have the confidence to know that we have the word of God and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is uh, is our uh, way of uh, escape. So uh, let's read a few scriptures of, you know, what, you know, Jesus's position when it comes to him reigning you know, in the in the millennial reign. Uh, once again, this is a literal reign of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How do we know? Because the scripture tells us so. We're, we're heavily in the book of Revelation tonight. Um, let's go to Revelation 20, 1 through 7. I'll give you a moment to get there because I have to get there myself. Revelation 20. 20 chapter, 1 through 7. I'll read that to you. Do you have it? You can say amen in the chat. You guys are kind of quiet tonight, but that's okay. Revelations 20, 1 through 7, it says, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So there's an angel involved. The angel uh, has the key of the bottomless pit. We're going to see what the bottomless pit is for and who it is for. And um, a great chain in his hand. The Bible says, and he laid hold on the dragon. Hmm. Satan. Which is the devil. And Satan and bound him a thousand years. So Satan will be bound during the millennial reign of Christ. That's what the scripture says. That's not what uh, Pastor Rob says. Is what the scripture says. And it says, and cast him into the bottomless pit. So this angel casts the devil into the bottomless pit. And then the scripture says, and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a season. Satan is going to only have a season to do his final destruction. And the Bible says, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them. Judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Remember I told you, I didn't make that up. You had to be a martyr during this time. You know, and the Bible lets us know that they were beheaded. Their heads were cut off for the witness of Jesus Christ. Why were their heads cut off? Why were they martyrs? Because of the witness of Jesus Christ. Remember that the two witnesses will witness. Remember that there will be 144,000 ministers, 12,000 from each tribe of the tribes of Israel. It said earlier, it's, that is mentioned earlier in the book of Genesis. So remember that they're beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Beheaded because they've testified about Jesus. Beheaded because of their belief in the word of God. So the scripture says, and which had not worshipped the beast. Here's the key. These people in the tribulation, did not worship the Antichrist. The Antichrist's desire is to be worshipped. Satan 
just a pause, was booted out of heaven because he said he was going to be like the most high God. So we find here that those that were martyred were martyred because of their belief in Jesus Christ, the belief in the word. Number three, they did not honor, they did not worship, as the Bible says, the beast. Neither his image, neither had received, here it is, his mark. Satan has a mark. The Antichrist has a mark. The, the number 666. And we have to know that, you know, the that man will always be a six. He was created on the sixth day. The Bible says that the Lord rested on the seventh. So it says uh, that he, they did not receive his mark upon their foreheads or in or in their hands, because the mark of the beast is on is, is taken either on the in on the forehead or on the hand. You know, we have to be mindful that we are identified right now. Everything that, that is connected to us has a number of some kind. Your social security number, your address, your cell phone number, your landline number, your birthday, the days of the week, the days of the month, the, your, your bank account, your 401k account. Everything has an account. Matter of fact, what you're listening through right now, there is an account tied to it. There is a number tied to it. So we find that that numbers mean a lot. And we have to realize that there's nothing that we really can touch. And this computer that I'm that I that I'm uh using to to communicate with you tonight has something called an IP address that is that is associated with only this computer. So everything that we look at, something, there's a number on it somewhere. This bottle of water tells you how many ounces is in it. It tells you how much of this or that is in it. It has a UPC code on it where a person can scan it. And when they scan it, the price of this bottle of water will be will be identified. So we have to know that numbers uh, uh, mean a whole lot. So here we find it says they didn't take the the um, the number on their forehead of the of the mark of the beast. It says or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ. They lived and reigned. Listen with Christ for a thousand years. I want you to catch this. They lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Can we read a, read a little bit more? It says, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On the such, the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him. Here it is. When the Lord is redundant, we got to pay attention to it. Once again, when the Lord repeats himself, trust me, it's important. And the Bible says, and shall reign with him a thousand years. The seventh verse says, and when the thousand years are expired or when the thousand years are up, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison to further deceive, to make a, his last attempt to destroy. And it shows us that how the Lord has created us. It shows us that the Lord is not going to force us to do anything that we don't want to do. He is going to show us the consequences of disobedience. He is going to show us, reveal to us the benefits of obeying his word. And our ultimate benefit of obeying his word is eternal life with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I hope you caught that tonight. I hope this wasn't uh, too much uh, for you at one time. So the millennial reign will determine, terminate at the end of the thousand year period. Satan will be set free. There will be a rebellion against God. It will prove that Satan has not changed even after being bound for a thousand years. And you know that we have to realize that you know, once again, Christ will bring order. He'll bring eternal order uh, to, to the earth on this new earth. There'll be a new heaven. There'll be a new earth 
Once again, it's called the Holy City or the New Jerusalem. And in this teaching, I'm going to spend uh, a few moments at the at the end of the book of Revelation so that we can know exactly what we have to look forward to when it comes to uh, being a part of that holy city. And once again, uh, I'm going to put a pin right here. Uh, we're going to pick up where uh, we left off, you know, on last week, on, on this week, and we're going to pick it up on, on next week. And I trust that uh, this is blessing you because it's blessing me sharing it with you. Once again, think about it. We're reigning with the Lord a thousand years before, you know, we even experience that wonderful place, once again, called the New Jerusalem, uh, called uh, the Holy City. I'm so glad that you joined me tonight. Uh, we're going to bring uh, this Bible study to a close. I want to give you an opportunity to uh, share your prayer requests. Uh, we're going to take this time to uh, to um, participate in, in giving. And if you would do that on tonight, I've posted the, the giving link a couple of times and I'm encouraging those that uh, log in every week. If you would sow a seed, I'm just going to ask you that if you would just kindly sow a five dollar seed tonight, you can sign on to give the five that you see scrolling across the bottom of your screen. That's G-I-V-L-I-F-Y.com. You can sign on to grtchurch.org or you can click right on the uh, PayPal link that is in the chat and it will allow you to. Um, to sow on tonight. Would you sow a seed tonight um, on Bible study night? And we just thank God for what he has shared with us. We're going to pick up on next week. I've, this is probably, you know, one of the longer subjects that we have covered. And, you know, I've been um, in this teaching, you know, um, teaching you various subjects. Um, you know, these are major doctrines that every Christian uh, needs to know. And we started in November and it is August and uh, we're still teaching it. So, I trust that, you know, you'll continue to be blessed uh, from week to week by the word of God. And we know that the Lord is still speaking to us through uh, his holy word. So I trust that you are blessed tonight. Let's sow something in the name of the Lord. Let's sow a seed. And if you sow a seed, you have a right to expect a harvest in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here I'm going to give you an opportunity to type any name, any name of family that your family member, a family that you know, someone that you know that stand in the need of prayer. Yeah, Bishop, uh, Sister Arnett says, Bishop, when Satan is released, he will try to defeat Christ. Yeah, he's already by this point he has already lost the battle. His target won't be Christ. The only way that he'll try to defeat Christ is through further deception of those um, that have, that are that are still lost. So they can't accept Jesus Christ, you know, because we have to be mindful that those that 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 were beheaded were beheaded because of the, they believed in Jesus Christ. They believed in the word of God and they did not take the mark. They did not take the mark of of the beast. So we have to realize that anyone we know we can we can make it clear like this. Anyone that misses heaven has rejected Jesus Christ. People go to hell because they rejected Jesus Christ. But we have to know that God has been faithful to give us his word ahead of time to prepare. And I'm glad that the Lord waited on you and me. How many can give God a praise for that? He waited on you and me. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, ask you if you would type in the chat your um your family member, you know, we're going to pray for uh, Jasmine Craig, praying and family. Uh, let me see, Larmicia Sander uh, family. Uh, there was a shooting uh, this past Sunday on Berkshire Avenue. So let's pray for a hedge of of protection uh, over these uh, families in the name of the Lord, the Schultz family. You are uh, definitely in our prayers tonight, a prayer request made by uh, Mother Schultz. Hallelujah. Believers will rise in the first resurrection. That's why the Bible says, blessed are those that taketh part in the 
first resurrection. Um, the Edwards family, a question, a prayer request by Sister Hilda Coney. Uh, Yolanda Charman, praying for her in Jesus' name. And I'm going to, oh, Sister Kinsey, pray for the nation, for our youth and the adults that work with them, praying for teachers, praying for administrators in our schools as our kids prepare uh, to go back to school, continue to pray for our, our children uh, in Jesus' name. I want to pray continuously for the unsaved. Pray for those that um, that have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we want to be a witness. We want to be a conduit. We want to be an ambassador of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of what I have to share with you this coming Sunday is going to deal with that. You know, the believer being an instrument to spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praying for the Miller family. Uh, prayer request by Sister Sandra Miller. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody in the name of the Lord. That, and let's, you know, in advance, pray for our children, pray for our young people as they return to school, whether it's preschool or whether it's those that are returning to a college campus or, or uh, going to be a freshman on a college campus for uh, the very first time. We want to intercede for our young people in Jesus name. Are you ready to pray tonight? Glory to God. Are you ready to call on the name of the Lord? Praying for you continuously that God gets his very best out of you and we'll continue to grow in the word of God and we'll continue to have an unsatisfied appetite for the word of God and that we'll continue to grow together individually and collectively praying that God will bless you to be a blessing, to be a blessing to somebody else, that God will continue to define you, that God will continue to anoint you, that no matter what you face, he's going to give you the strength to strive. That is our theme for the year, that God has given us the strength to strive. And I'm still, I still have that theme in my, my spirit, that focus in my spirit, that whatever we face, God is going to bring you through it. Don't think, you know, that you're just saved and that's it. No, you're saved to be a blessing. You're saved to make a difference. You're saved to be a threat against the forces of hell. You're saved to create the environment of, of worship and praise in your household, wherever you go. You are saved to let your light shine. But we are salt and light. We are not going to put that light under a bushel. But we're going to put it on a candlestick where it can be seen with a light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will shine through us. So once again, be motivated to move forward. Be motivated to give God your very best in the name of the Lord. Join us this coming Sunday at 9 a.m. for T-shirt Faith Expression Sunday. We're going to have a good time in the Lord, and I want to see you in the sanctuary. And we are going to give God all the honor and the praise. But let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, come before you tonight. You have given us this word. You have given us this topic. You have given us the scriptures to support it. And I thank you, Lord, tonight. But for the purposes of this prayer, we pray for those that have put names and family situations, Lord God, family names in the chat, Lord God, that you will hear, that you will answer prayer that you will meet need, that we will stand on the promises of your word, and that we will conduct ourselves like there is nothing too hard for you to do. For what we face, we know that you're on our side. We know that you are with us. We know that you're blessing families. You're saving the unsaved. Those that are broken, you're putting them back together again. Those that are sick, you're healing them through the power of of your blood. Those that are grieving, you're giving them the comfort, Lord God, that they need. Those that are thinking about giving up and giving in, you're going to give them the fresh wind of your Holy Spirit. Those that are lost, you're going to give them an opportunity to respond to your word. 
Let your anointing be upon ministries, upon pastors that are bringing forth the word of God, evangelists that are going out into the field, missionaries that are going into the foreign field. Those are God that need your direction and guidance and anointing, Lord God, to stay the hand of the enemy. We thank you tonight. We praise you tonight for every prayer request, because we believe that you're going to answer and a testimony is going to follow. We thank you for abiding with us tonight. We thank you for your word that is spoken to us tonight as it relates to what is to come and what we should expect. But Lord, we declare that we are rapture ready. The enemy is upset with us that we are studying your word. The enemy wants to distract us because, Lord, we desire to abide in your word, hear your word, receive your word, walk in your word, live in your word. We thank you, Lord God, tonight. We praise you. We love you. We declare that the prayers that we prayed are already answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen and amen. Thank God for you tonight. Thank God for your presence. Thank God for you allowing me to be your virtual teacher on tonight. So let us come together this coming Sunday at 9 a.m. in the morning at the Greater Refuge Temple of Christ. You won't regret having gotten out of the bed to give God the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. God bless you and have an incredibly blessed evening in Jesus' name.